Hey, you! Do you love salt? Do you find yourself putting it into things that really probably shouldn't have any salt in there? Do you feel like when people talk to you, you get insulted? insulted? So then we have the perfect shirt for you to let people know not to mess with you. Comes in kids, adults, t-shirts, and hoodies. And if you're not into clothing, it also comes as a mug. Cause when you're a grain, you come in like a hurricane. Hey grains, Copic markers are pretty expensive. At about $9 a marker, it's far from being a bargain. So naturally, my cheapy self was like, no, I am not paying $9 per marker. Nay. But every amazing artist that I've seen here on YouTube had a set. So naturally, it was still hanging out in the back of my mind that I needed them. Fast forward a few years later, when I went to Japan, I found these markers at $3. Not the American or Canadian $9, they were $3. So you bet your salty butt I splurged and um, may have bought more than I probably would ever need. This is me flexing on you guys! I don't need to flex. Anybody can buy them if they're $3 in Japan. But with that said, my cheap self still wants to think of different ways we can actually make our own alcohol ink markers. <coughs> so when last week I did the Crayola marker making kit, one of the first things that came to my mind is can I turn these into Copic markers? Let, let me show you. As I'm recording on, on this side over there, I have some Copic markers. So naturally, this was one of the things I really wanted to experiment so that you can have a very cheap alternative of making a marker at about one dollar with materials you already have if you buy this kit. So we're going to attempt making these markers into these. So in case you haven't seen the video I'm talking about, it is this kit that cost me about $15 Canadian and you can make 16 markers. It, it is a little less than a dollar per marker. And the set comes with empty shells for marker making. So it comes with the primary colors and a handy color mixing chart. So you can pretty much make the colors that you need to color with. There are downsides to the color chart which I explained in my other video so I'll link that in the card section so you can check it out after watching this video. Video. And this is what the casing that we get looks like. We get the cartridge, the cotton looking thing, the nib, which is a hard nib, but you can get both wide and narrow lines. And then the top part that we just close everything off. And we also get this vial where we know that 15 milliliters or up to that 15 area here is exactly what you need to fill the whole little cotton thing up. So it is pretty useful so that we don't, you know, underestimate or overestimate any ink. And last but not least, we get this thing over here. We will, you know, put our pen thing to stand up so that we can fill it up. If you don't know what Copic markers are, I'm going to be trying everything on Copic paper just so that we have a cohesive testing space. So the idea behind Copic markers is that we can create seamless blending. I'm not going to do too much blending, but you can get gorgeous colors that go close to each other and then go back with your other marker, kind of just blend them together so that they look really cool. And of course, it's always better to go in with the middle color. I'm not an art channel, I'm just experimenting here. We're experimenting together. Whereas if I tried the same kind of idea with water-based markers, the paper might tear, it might seize, uh, you know, all these different terms. I'm, I'm so smart. But they don't blend as seamlessly. So as you can see the difference between the two, here we're getting layers, as opposed to here we're getting a kind of blend. One is water-based, the other one is alcohol-based. Do you see where this is going? Ah, sure. So what I'm going to try and recreate are these two colors with the Crayola marker maker. Closest two that I have is this one here and that one over here. And we're going to see if we can get something as close as possible to a Copic marker. Pray to the art gods. Alright, so let's do a little bit of math. Since I want this color over here, we need 12 blue and 3 yellow. What I'm gonna do is do these amounts in half and then supplement it with alcohol. I went ahead and bought this pure alcohol bottle. It was about six bucks. I got this at the pharmacy. And we're gonna fill that gap with the remainder. Cross our fingers and see if that works. If it doesn't work, I'm going to be testing so many different options to see which one works best. I got me some rubbing alcohol. Yup, smells like the doctor's office. At this point, I added half the amount of inks that were required from the color chart. And as you can see, I am adding the remainder up until the 15 with the rubbing alcohol that is 99%. Time for the moment of truth. And in goes the cotton-ish swab. I didn't think it would float that much, but I guess we'll wait and see for it to absorb. There it goes. Oh my God, you can start seeing it absorb into there. Time for time lapse. 
All right, time to get the marker ready. We're just going to insert the nib pretty snugly like so. And we're going to let it suspend from here as the marker make its, make, make its way down the tip. Wow, English is so not my first language today. This is so exciting. So we have our first marker. One of the things that I feel I could be wrong is that it might not be juicy enough. I really want it to be liquidy. So I'm going to go just a little over the 15 mark on the actual tube over here because I like my markers juicy. So we're going to go ahead and do the other color, but this time add just a little more of the alcohol and a little bit more of those inks. In case you're wondering what it smells like, because that's always what I think of when I think of supplies, what do they smell like? This is a mixture of blueberry and the doctor's office. You really can't smell it unless you get very close to it. So we're going to put these two aside and now we're going to go on to the next test. We're gonna test all of them at the end to see which one yields the best result. Why am I waving these like magic wands? All right, one thing about the Crayola markers is that they are washable ink, so I don't know how they're going to behave with the alcohol. So we're going to go and use non-washable ink. I highly don't recommend you to get this brand. I bought maybe 10 of those a year ago, and they are in the worst clunky, gelatiny condition ever. Two of them survived. Again, half is going to be the ink, and the other half we're going to be using the 99% rubbing alcohol. Oh, by the way, if this works, this is pearlescent ink, which means that we can actually have pearlescent alcohol markers, which don't exist, as far as I know, in the Copic or other brand colors. So if we can make our own, we can make shiny Copics. Heck yeah. Spoiler alert, we still don't get any um, shimmery Copics. All right, this is, this is pretty gross because as soon as I put in the alcohol, what ended up happening is this ink started to turn pretty cakey and gross, which kind of sucks because it would have been really neat to be able to get pearlescent. These inks... In the trash! Waste of money. Waste of everything. So interestingly enough, I did some measurements and the 15 line over here is actually approximately 2.5 milliliters. This whole time I thought it was 15 milliliters, but it is actually 2.5. So I'm going to be squirting some actual Copic marker ink. Still fresh. So I'm going to be making it in two of my favorite browns, E11 and E13. It seems that the 15 in actual Copic ink absorbs way more quickly than the water-based plus alcohol. Now I'm starting to worry. Now for the 813, let's listen to it again. Oh, that didn't work. You have failed me, Copic! Why have you forsaken me? And lastly, I'm going to try the Chameleon Alcohol Ink Refills. That way you can see the difference between the Crayolas, Copics, and Chameleons. And I'm pretty sure if you buy any other alcohol ink from any other craft store, you will end up getting the same results. But we don't, we don't even know if it works. <laughs> Why am I getting ahead of myself? So let's just do these two, then do two other ones, and do our swatches and see if they blend or if they layer. Because I love experimenting, I'm going to do one last batch of colors and it's going to be the exact two over here so we can see the difference. So I did try to mimic the Copic colors, now I'm going to re-mimic the Crayola colors to do the alcohol swatch underneath. You grains know how smart I am, right? I just made a double of this color in alcohol form too. Remember I did it at the beginning because I wanted to mimic the color? I could have just done the eggplanty one. <laughs> Brilliant, this one in it. So here is the moment of truth. 
I'm going to make five different swatches, one for the original Copic, and I tried to get the two colors closest to the ones we're going to swatch. The original Crayola, which is the water-based non-alcohol one, and then the Crayola ink mixed with alcohol. Down here, the chameleons inside the Crayolas, and then the Copics inside the Crayola. Alright, so just to be very clear, I am a complete beginner when it comes to art and Copics. I'm just looking at the kinds of behavior I expect from my Copic markers to be in this version that I'm testing out. So the first drawings that we did, this is the Copic original and this is the Crayola original. Now with the same colors, more or less, if I try to do a bit of a blend over here, you can see that the ones with the alcohol put inside were actually a little more cooperative in blending with each other as opposed to being very harsh. And if you work it just a little more, you can get even more blends. Just to let you know, this is the next day and I am using the Crayolas with the rubbing alcohol in it. I got a hang of using it, and it's way better than the swatches I did in the ovals, so this, my grains, is the result you're getting. I know I colored them all differently, so don't, don't, don't get, don't get triggered. Calm down. And for those of you getting triggered by me saying triggered, calm down. So here we have the original Copics, here we have the original Crayola. As you can see, the middle part is a really harsh straight line, even though I tried to blend it so that it can kind of, you know, just cooperate and smooth into the other color, it, it didn't want anything to do with it. But if we look at the Crayola with the alcohol marker, it really did kind of blend a lot more. It wasn't just a harsh line, so I was able to get this kind of transition, and yeah, I, I did work it, and the colors got darker, which is a kind of expected behavior from blending. And then the second one, which was a pretty cool effect, but I don't think it's very Copic marker-like, but it is still Copic marker-ish. So I was still able to get a blend and a smoother transition. And then with the Chameleon Crayolas, so the Chameleon inks, which could be any alcohol ink refills that you could buy at any craft store, yes, it did work, and yes, it did give us a pretty smooth transition. I probably should have chosen colors closer to each other to make the transition even smoother. And then putting Copic marker ink inside the Crayola, yes, it did behave very similarly to Copic markers. So the question is, can we make alcohol markers with the Crayola marker maker set? And to me, as a beginner, the answer is absolutely. If you're looking for a cheap alternative with gorgeous pigments and a color chart that you can follow more or less, I would probably recommend this method, especially if you're not sure if you're into Copics and you don't want to spend so much money. You can spend $20 and pick up a bottle of 99% rubbing alcohol and make yourself about 16 markers. That is a great deal. So here are the advantages. There are six of them. Number one, yes, they can be alcohol markers at about a 50 to 60% ratio. I think you can definitely add a little more rubbing alcohol into the mixture and it wouldn't be so bad. It might actually make it a little more juicy. The second advantage is that the colors that come with the Crayola kit are really gorgeously pigmented. So it's not like you're getting cheaped out on the pigments. The colors are just absolutely gorgeous. And it's a plus that it smells pretty. Because we're getting empty casings for markers, you can buy any alcohol inks from any craft store and just refill it. So if you happen to just have some laying around or if you're an artist and you just have refills because you like to use it for other things, you can use these casings. At about $1 each or less, it is a bargain because if you were to buy just an empty Copic marker like this over here, it is about $3 and it's it's completely empty. So there's, there's nothing inside and you could just custom make your own color. Whereas you could just buy the actual Crayola ones and you'll be fine. I know some of you are probably like, but Jackie, the Copic marker have a brush nib and that is an absolute must for blending. The answer is I hear you. However, this blend speaks for itself. Because we have a tip and the side, it does work pretty well, in my not official opinion. Once you have the three primary colors, you can go to town and have fun with every combination that you can think of. And of course, if you want hues in between, you might have to look for white. 
So once you get those colors, not only do you have them in the actual chambers over here, but you can refill them. The issue with a lot of the cheap markers that you can buy online is that they don't have refills in the color that you like. Well, guess what? You can't just buy one color. Whereas if you have your own color chart and you really like your color, you already have the refills, just remake it and refill it and you're good to go for a long time to come. Yes, they can be refilled with Copic inks. Oddly enough, even though we're using the 99% alcohol, it doesn't smell like alcohol. Let me know what your grains thought of this method. It's just something that really came to me and I was like, I need to try this in all its glory. And I really think that it is a good method for someone who is absolutely a beginner like me or who isn't quite sure how to play around with Copics. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch a crafting video, check it up here. And if you want to watch a salty video, check it down here. Salty Crafter will be back on Friday, so just wait for her. Until then, I will see you in the next video.